Hello Unity fans and welcome back to my game development series. Today we are adding a stock standard feature when it comes to games played on some kind of large map. The player usually needs a way to quickly jump to different areas of interest of the playing environment. It is also very helpful to have an overview of the world in much less detail to allow you to orientate yourself, plan strategic moves and keep an eye on important large scale factors. Many of these mechanics or functionalities are accomplished through the use of a minimap. Let's design our minimap and look at some possible pitfalls in the process. Quite often, the minimap is basically a bird's eye view of the entire map or world with some points of interest given special importance. It can therefore be tempting to simply place a second camera high above the map looking down at everything below and just let it render its view onto a panel somewhere in the corner or on some UI overlay level. But there are a few problems with this option. Firstly, this can greatly increase the amount of resources spent on rendering every frame. You suddenly have an extra camera that needs to render the entire world even though some parts of it would be so small that any render detail would just be a waste of resources. Having different level of detail meshes or LODs may alleviate some of this, but usually a different approach is required. Secondly, the scale of certain objects or important points of interest are often exaggerated on the minimap, since they are more significant in terms of high level strategies, while other features or details can be totally omitted. This warrants a different approach. We need some way of mirroring the world map, but in a lot less detail and with more focus placed on important strategic features. We do need a second camera to provide the bird's eye view for us, but it actually does not even have to see the detailed world. What we'll do is create the low detail meshes of the minimap in combination with the higher detail meshes of the terrain. We already have the grid chunk prefab that combines all our terrain layers by creating a separate mesh for each layer. My first attempt was simply adding minimap versions for the appropriate layers. Each chunk of 5x5 hexes consists of one mesh for each of these terrain layers, and they would all be rendered on the same main camera. The meshes dedicated to the minimap are placed on a separate camera layer, so that we can tell the main camera to ignore them and the minimap camera to only render that specific minimap layer. We'll have a look at the detail a bit later, but let's go through the high level idea first. Now, as the terrain meshes are created, we call corresponding triangulation methods to create the minimap versions of the meshes. However, here you can see for the water and main terrain that we create a single triangle for each hex segment, rather than the four triangles that allowed us variability on the edges of segments. We also don't render the terraces or cliffs. Each hex is therefore represented by only 6 triangles, while a hex on the detailed map can easily consist of 100 triangles depending on terraces and cliffs. Of course, this leaves our hexes unconnected, since we haven't bothered with the intricacies of the bridges between them. But it does not matter, since we will use an orthogonal camera to render the minimap. An orthogonal camera ignores height and renders everything as if it was on the same flat surface. You can place some objects on top of others by having them higher up, thus closer to the camera and 3D space, but everything would still look like one flat surface when viewed through that camera. Since this version of the terrain contains such a low number of triangles compared to the detailed version, it renders a lot faster, since we don't waste resources on unnecessary detail. However, I still found that my frame rate dropped by about 10 frames per second. The reason for this was that I was adding 5 meshes for each 5x5 chunk of hexes. On large maps, that turns out to be quite a few. Now, since these meshes contain relatively few triangles, we could actually group a lot more than 5x5 hexes together and drastically decrease the number of meshes required for the minimap. I grouped 5x5 five five chunks of 5x5 five five hexes each together for a total minimap chunk size of 25x25 25 25 hexes. Of course, now each chunk cannot have its own set of minimap meshes anymore, so they have to share. For this reason, 
and to have some more control over minimap functionality, we split the minimap chunk out from the normal terrain chunk. Where the map grid creator creates terrain chunks, it now also creates minimap chunks and assigns each terrain chunk to the appropriate minimap chunk. So every time that any of the terrain chunks assigned to a minimap chunk changes, that minimap chunk needs to retriangulate its entire 25 by 25 hex mesh. But having fewer large chunks that need to be retriangulated more often turns out to be faster than having many small chunks that have to be retriangulated less often. By the time I'd optimized my minimap, it barely knocked one frame off my achieved frames per second. This minimap chunk looks very much the same as the main terrain chunks, except for the reduced detail. We also want to make rivers and roads slightly wider on the minimap so that they are more easily visible, especially on larger maps. So we let a river take up the entire width of a segment's edge and we create a copy of the road shader so we can adjust the width of the roads in it. We place all of these layers on a special minimap camera layer. There's one very special final layer we need to add, which I call the overlay. We will use this to indicate points of interest and other strategic information on the map. For now, I've got only a very simple sprite to indicate trees, so we'll just flag all resources with this sprite to keep it simple and show the idea. Now, since sprites can be rendered on a simple quad, we actually need only two triangles to display any one of the sprites or icons we may want to overlay onto the minimap. This means you can add a lot of 2D detail for very little overhead. We simply triangulate a quad, then set its UVs to tell it which part of the material's texture it needs to display. Since we have only one sprite on the texture at the moment, we let it display the entire texture. But eventually, we'll want to tile all our sprites or icons into a single texture and determine the correct UV coordinates for each icon here. We can also play around with its size to find something that is a bit larger than the real size, allowing us to more easily see it, without it taking up too much real estate on the minimap. Okay, so we've now triangulated this simple proxy of our map, but how do we overlay it on the screen as part of our UI? We follow a very standard Unity approach, namely setting up an orthogonal camera to render the minimap layer only. Since the size of the map is variable, we need to set the position and orthographic size of the camera whenever the map size changes. We do this at the same place where the turtle is moved to its correct position. We can easily infer the camera's position from the turtle's anchor point, since the turtle is anchored to the center of the map, while the camera should be located above the center of the minimap. We now let the camera render its view into a render texture object and use this render texture on the UI layer as the texture of a raw image. You can now resize and position this as you please and it would look a lot nicer if I can eventually put some kind of turtle themed frame around the map as a finishing touch. But while it may be nice to look at, we also want it to have some functionality. Specifically, we want the main view to shift over to the area corresponding to where the cursor is on the minimap whenever we click on it. To achieve this, we add an event trigger component to the minimap texture and write a method for the pointer click event, which centers the main map on the corresponding hex. Now, we already have a way to center the camera on any given hex, so all we need to do is figure out which hex corresponds to the position on the rendered texture. Luckily, there are some standard functions to help us with that. First, we convert the pointer screen position to a local position on the rectangle of the minimap render texture. Next, we normalize that position, scaling it to between 0 and 1. So 0 on the x-axis would represent the leftmost cell, while 1 represents the rightmost cell. So, if we now multiply this normalized position with the number of hexes on the x and z axes respectively, we know which coordinates correspond to the point we've clicked on. Then we just let our camera jump to be centered on that hex, building in some smooth movement with a coroutine to polish the jump a bit. And there we have the basics of our minimap. Eventually we will probably want to add some more strategic layers to the overlay, allow some visuals to be toggled on and off, etc. But those are topics we'll hopefully get to in another video on another day. Please consider subscribing to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye!